Disney's Frozen follows sisters Anna and Elsa, whose close childhood relationship is severed when Elsa accidentally hurts her sister with her ice powers. As both girls grow up, Anna continues to try to repair the relationship and cannot understand why it deteriorated in the first place, while Elsa is advised by her parents to hide her powers from the world as well as her sister and lives in constant fear of being discovered and losing control. After their parents meet an unfortunate end, Elsa, who is the oldest and heir to the throne of Arendelle, becomes queen, and for the first time in years, the castle opens up to the rest of the kingdom. This fills Anna with joy and anticipation, and Elsa with dread. Things go off without incident until Anna meets Prince Hans, falls instantly in love, and tries to get her sister's blessing. This leads to a fight between the two girls, which causes Elsa to lose control of her powers. She flees the kingdom after being labeled a monster and hides up in the mountains, not realizing that in the process, she has unintentionally consumed all of Arendelle in an internal winter. Anna holds herself responsible for her sister's outburst and goes after her to try to talk to her and bring her back. Along the way, she meets an unsociable ice seller named Kristoff and his pet reindeer Spin, who she convinces to take her up to the North Mountain where her sister's hiding out as well as a magical snowman named Olaf, who is brought to life by her sister's magic. It's about time! All year it took. All year for an animated movie to come out that is actually good. After seeing this, I looked back on Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2, and wow was I generous to that film. This is the only movie I've seen this year that could actually go up against the films that came out last year. Ever since Princess and the Frog, it seems like modern Disney princess movies are not only trying to update the way the whole princess thing is seen, but they also frequently poke fun at common Disney tropes. However, while movies like Princess and the Frog and Tangled still at some times fell back into bad habits, Frozen is not only sharp and comedic about its many good-natured jabs at its predecessors, but also throws in a lot of smart twists, so that while it still feels like the Disney formula, it's clearly had a welcome dose of pragmatism mixed in. Add to that some beautiful animation and some genuinely enjoyable characters, and this may be the choice holiday film to see this year. So there's this one really great reoccurring plot point about true love, which is both used to comedic effect and comes back in the plot in meaningful ways. Anna and Prince Hans share this ridiculous song that is basically poking fun of previous films where two people fall in love over the course of a musical number. And you can tell because the lyrics are really silly. And then when she goes to ask for her sister's blessing because they get engaged, her sister responds in a refreshingly sane way along the lines of, you just met, you can't marry him now. And then this comes back again when Anna is talking to Kristoff, and he asks some questions that I've really wondered in the past with Disney movies. Like, do you actually know anything about him? Do you know his last name, his eye color, what his favorite food is? Have you ever shared a meal? What if you don't like the way he eats? And all of this is really funny and also does a great job of making Disney feel more modern and more practical. But apart from that, I can't remember the last time I enjoyed all of the characters in a Disney film this much. Anna, though horribly naive and often making bad decisions, is still quite likable. She reminds me a bit of Rapunzel, except possibly more awkward. Even when she's doing stupid things, like getting engaged to a guy she just met, she maintains that likability. One, because the movie never suggests that these decisions are good ones. Two, because she does actually grow as a character. Three, because her character is established in such a way as to make these actions understandable. And four, because she does a number of other things that are quite positive. Like personally taking responsibility for her sister and going out herself to save the kingdom. Elsa's never portrayed as a villain, as it's obvious her current predicament is due to a series of unfortunate circumstances and some admittedly unwise parenting. She may be slightly more interesting than Anna just because of what she had to go through and how it shaped her as a person. Unlike her sister, she's much more mature and sensible and becomes something of a tragic character who's been forced into the role of villain by no fault of her own. Still, the movie never goes far enough so that the audience can't sympathize. The male lead, Kristoff, is also really enjoyable. Even though I like Tangled, I can't really say I was crazy about Flynn Rider. 
Too often the men in these films are just as dull as the women. Kristoff feels less like the traditional Disney prince, and yes, I realize he's not, but bear with me, and more like an actual character with flaws and personality quirks. I also enjoy the fact that his design is less idealized than is generally the case for Disney. And the comic relief was not bad. Sven I thoroughly enjoyed, and as for Olaf, well, I expected Olaf to annoy the crap out of me, and he really didn't. I can't say that I find him particularly necessary to the story, it's obvious just Disney with their sidekick syndrome, but he didn't get in the way and he did have some good lines, and for a Disney movie I think that's really all I can ask for. If I had to criticize anything, I'd have to say that there are a few parts where the writing does get a bit awkward, and goes the way of Princess and the Frog and that the film doesn't really know what to do, so we get a series of lucky coincidences. But it's not really all that intrusive and is saved by the fact that the rest of the film is quite strong. The songs were somewhat hit and miss for me, although I don't think any of them were bad. The standout was Elsa's song Let It Go, which also benefits from having the most impressive animation. The song at the very beginning was pretty good, and the song Anna sings during the growing up montage does have its strengths. Virtually everything else is sort of playing towards the humorous side of things, and they are pretty funny. Particularly, again, in the case of Anna and Hans' song. But, well, look at something like the Muppets. A lot of those songs are funny too, but they're also catchy as hell. These are slightly less so. I think some people are worth melting for. You're just maybe not right this second. Nothing's in my no. way. Hang in there, guys! Geek Vision.